The following is a presentation of TFNN, live at TFNN, The Money Masters. The Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the October 29th, terrific Tuesday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with tools that, well, just simply tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential, folks, that's something you and I, we must master each and every day. You know, the question for each of us is not what we would do if we had the means, the time, the influence, and the educational advantages. The question is, what will we do with the things that we have? And the reason is because you have an amazing power within yourself. You know, folks, I say live life fully especially while we're here. Experience everything. I mean everything. Take care of yourself and your friends. Have fun. Be crazy. Be weird every now and again. Go out and screw up. Guess what? You're going to anyway, so you might as well enjoy that process too. Take the opportunity, though, to learn from your mistakes. Find the cause of your problem and eliminate it. Man, I do that all the time. Don't try to be perfect because perfection doesn't exist. It is the lowest standard that is out there. When I speak with people and they say that they uh, aren't able to take action or I'd like to trade, but everything's got to be just right out there, it doesn't work that way, folks. you got to jump in at some point in time, and when you do that, you'll find that you're just simply going to be an extraordinary example of being a human being. Let's go look for some extraordinary examples on the marketplace right now. The Dow is up 28 points. It's trading out at 15,597. S&P is up 2.5 at 1764. Composite back two points. That's trading out at 39.38. Russell 2000 up a point at 1119. Apple now down $3 and change, almost 4 bucks. Trading out at 525. Microsoft back 21 ticks. Google up 57 cents. Lead the charge to the upside. Jones Lang LaSalle, JLL up 13%, up 11 bucks and change. Geospace Technology, G E O S. That's up 12%, up about $11. You've got uh, Partner Limited, P R E, up 5%. Xylem. Don't know if I got it right, but X Y L. That's up 15%, up 4 bucks and change. Tableau Software, D A T A. Is there a ticker symbol? Up about 6%. Alir, A L R. That's up about 12%, up $3.80 to the downside here. Cummings Inc. leading the charge off 8%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals jumping in on the game, down 10 bucks. That's off 3.5%. Apple down about 5 Comvault Systems down 5%, nearly 5 bucks. ChemEd Corp., C-H-E, that is down uh, 4 bucks. That's off 6%. Channel Advisors, E-C-O-M, down 10%. Volcano Corporation off 15%. Biogen, B double I B down about uh, three bucks. LinkedIn off four. Our call number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. You know, if you didn't catch us on the uh, last hour, the uh, Trader's Edge, we were taking a look at the early in the uh, first segment. We looked at the uh, currency pairs. I think we only got to three of them, uh, but we did get to the Euro Yen currency pair, one of my favorite uh, pairs. And what I did say at that stage, we see we should see the market open up, which it did. We should see it pull back because of the directional correlation that this currency pair has to the markets. And this currency pair was telling us it had no choice but to either move sideways or pull back. It just simply got into a condition where that rubber band had stretched, and that's, in fact, what we have seen take place thus far. Now, the key here is going to be, what's that pullback? That's what I was saying out here, because if the pullback is somewhat mild and meek, and then it begins to move higher, what we'll really have set up is this yellow pattern. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, not only will that have been a Gartley buy, but that D point of that Gartley buy will actually be the C point of an A to B equals C to up. So we'll go draw that pattern in here momentarily. Let's take a look at what we have seen thus far, and that has been the dead cat bounce, the point three eight two retracement as we move back to the one thirty four sixty four level. It actually got to one thirty four sixty five out there. Let's take a look at what the potential at this stage here of the A to B equals C D of this uh, Gartley pattern, here's the actual, let me grab the actual B point, 
and the C point we're going to use is going to be the low that came in at 6 o'clock this morning. So it's off to a, a good start out here. That would say about 135, 31. If that is, in fact, what unfolds, then we will see higher prices, or we should see higher prices in the uh, marketplace here. So, so far, things unfolding as they should inside the uh, marketplace. Now, meanwhile, let's go take a look at the uh, indexes out here and see what they are uh, doing. Let's start off by taking a look here. Let's go take a look. Well, we've got the Dow. So let's take a look at the uh, Dow. It's still traveling with inside the September 18th swing point. Yesterday was a doji in the uh, window. That says resistance, in this case here, is yesterday's high. If you see a close today above 15,599.09, a close above that, guess what? All signals full ahead go. That says that the continuation move would still be in place. That would set up at a minimum a test of 1570958. But the Dow needs to close above 1559909 in order to say that doji was nothing more than a pause point out there. And that is something you want to be paying attention to. Why? Because, as we have pointed out, within 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 a a, a very defined range out here. The Dow has been the weak link. You can't really say it's really that weak, though, because then you'd have to be acknowledging the mere fact that you're going to ignore the weekly chart and the monthly chart and so forth. So the Dow is nothing has been in nothing more than a, a sideways consolidation. It's a doozy out there because if we see a break of this consolidation pattern, folks, uh, you know I know you're going to ask the questions: How can this happen with all the other things that might be going on? in the uh, world and all the bad things that you might find out there. But you know what? The stock charts are the uh, stock charts out here. So we're really running into a resistance area and inside the uh, weekly chart. Then what you're looking at is the top of that shooting star candle from September 20th. This is on the cash index. This is at 1570958. That is the real resistance area. You get a close above that on the weekly chart. That will be your first indication that the Dow wants to move up into the 16,056, somewhere right inside that uh, range out there. And then what you'd really like to see is a pullback, test the top of the consolidation, reject that area, and then begin to move higher out here. So that's what's going on out uh, there. In fact, I'm going to go switch over. I took a look at the Euro-Japanese yen with you guys uh, earlier and today, and uh, we want to really be paying attention to this currency pair as well because this had completed the uh, 1.618 butterfly sell pattern. It did that at a nice bearish engulfing candle. Uh, Not if you're long, it wasn't nice for you, but it did have a nice reversal signal. That's all you're looking for, are signals from the marketplace. That was on October 23rd, and now we are seeing a, hey, maybe not so fast uh, move here inside the Euro-Japanese yen. We'll see. We want to pay attention. If this market is going to break out, so too will this currency pair. And if it doesn't, it'll be a divergence. And the one that's going to win, the one that will point the direction, it's this one right here, the Euro-Japanese yen. So you've got to keep an eye on this one. Uh, as well let's go take a look here at the uh, new york stock exchange let's see what we've got going on out here we're still above the uh, volume oscillator is positive the price oscillator is positive the summation index it's in a rising price channel that's these blue lines here at the uh, bottom of my uh, screen out there new york stock exchange that wants to get above the uh well wants to at least hit ten thousand one hundred it's hit ten thousand oh ninety three here this morning so that is, uh, you know, you could say that it's achieved its outcome, its objective, but that was only the first objective. Ten one twenty three. That is also uh, in uh, in uh, line here. But really, what the uh, New York Stock Exchange wants to do is get up and tag. Let's uh, let's change this because it's too confusing out here. Let's just change this to black. Let's just do that. It'll make it a little bit easier here, at least for you. If not for you, at least for me. Out there, let's change the 100% level to uh, black as well. There we go. There is the rising price channel. That's really what I want. Oh, that's not, you know, you say, hey, Steve, well, that's not good enough. Those lines are too thin out there. I agree with you. Let's go change those. We'll make those a little bit thicker out there, make it a little bit easier to see. So it is that uh, black diagonal set of lines that we're looking at that the New York Stock Exchange wants to uh, hit, and that would take it right into the top of the rising uh, price channel. I can't give you the exact price level of that. Maybe it's like about 10200 or so it's just going to be dependent upon the time but looks like that's what it wants so it's got uh, full steam ahead with regard to its engines out here now new york stock exchange closed up slightly positive yesterday but it did have some net declining issues let's see what we've got going on today uh 400 net advancing issues so that's uh, not too shabby out here 
New York Stock Exchange up about two tenths of a percent, up eighteen points right now. So that is uh, bullish out there. So that's on the NYSE. Let's go take a look at the S and P five hundred. S and P five hundred actually had no pause candle in place here yesterday. That says seventeen seventy six on its way up there right now. You're at seventeen sixty six, and so far we've seen a high today of seventeen sixty eight. Hey, just because I'm uh, calling or others are calling for seventeen seventy six, seventeen seventy seven, that doesn't mean that's where price is going to uh, stop. In fact, I would uh, say. Quite the opposite. If it can make 1776, it ought to go out there and test the top of that rising price channel. Those are the blue diagonal lines that you see. And that's just really a shorter term rising price channel, folks. So as I pull this back here, just so you can take a peek at it and we'll shorten it up a bit, that's just the little rising price channel with inside the larger rising price channel. Those are the red lines that you see up on our screen. That's in the 1800 ish range out there. That is on the S&P 500. So Anything is possible. Uh, the uh, market is in a extended condition uh, inside the SP 500. It most certainly is towards the oversold level. That means at some point in time here, we're going to see that condition worked off by moving sideways, and that would not be bearish. Moving sideways to a retracement out there, uh, but uh, you know it still has some room to run to the outside in a bullish market. And by the way, we're in the strongest bullish leg since. March of 2009. Just to give you an idea of how strong these markets are, the strongest leg since March of 2009. That is the uh, leg of the market that we are in right now. That being said, that means that uh, you know things can uh, remain in an overbought condition a little bit longer than normal out there. If we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 here, this will also be important for us to be paying attention to as we bisect and dissect the Russell 2000. It's had Quite a, a few doji uh, candles out here. The first one that we are paying attention to, well, that was on uh, the trading session of October 22nd, one one two one fifty three eleven twenty one fifty three is the magic number. A close above that, because that is resistance as we uh, speak, and that says that uh, price will continue to move higher. Uh, so far today, we've seen a test of that area. It's gotten up to 1122.64. What you're looking at today for any kind of confirmation is a close above 1121.53. That's the number to put down on your pad of uh, paper out there. That is the resistance level. If that is uh, taken out, if we see a close above that, then you're looking at 1129.75, uh, maybe 11.38 out here. Remember, this is the strong dog, and it is not overbought yet out here so that is on the uh, on the uh, russell 2000 let's go take a look at the a uh, little bit of a weak link out here uh and that is the uh, nasdaq composite now the nasdaq composite it did have a, a doji yesterday as well that says resistance now is not yesterday's candle but the day before so the number you want to be paying attention to on the composite to uh, have things in sync that's going to be and I didn't mean in sync the group. I meant in sync with all the other charts. You knew that. Thirty nine sixty one ten is the number. Thirty nine sixty one ten. You need to see it close above that. That says continuation to the upside. We'll be right back. Folks. Wednesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m., Andy Hecht has a special live online workshop for his subscribers to his weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, called A Roadmap That All Investors Should Use But Most Don't. During this hour-long live webinar, Andy will teach you how to use free and readily available market data to calculate the future expected price range for any asset. It's a simple yet powerful method that every investor should have in their toolbox. The best part is that you can attend this live online workshop, which will be archived, by simply signing up for a 30-day free trial to Andy's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. And this is the last month to lock in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. This price will be going up by over 25% come November, so now is the perfect time to get in on the action. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV... 
TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. That Dow's up uh, 45 points right now. S&P up four and a half. Composite is up uh, three. And let's round this out here. Let's go take a look at uh, the NDX 100. So the NDX 100 here, it has been struggling as of uh, late. We've seen a couple of uh, pause buttons here. You know, it's like uh, having a game on television. You hit the pause button. You go uh, grab another beer, and that's what the market uh, has been uh, doing out here. A little doji candle. That took place on October 21st. That said, Resistance was 3369.74. We saw a close above that. That was on a trading session of October 25th. That was on Friday out there. Yesterday, another doji candle. That says that uh, what the NDX needs in order to confirm that it wants to move higher, we need to see it close above 3400.04. So that's the number you want to write down on a pad of paper, 3400.04. And that will then signal a move higher inside of the NDX 100. That move higher taking us into the 3433 to 3464 area as its next target. Of course, we can see it's in an overbought uh, condition, but with this being as strong as it is, uh, it can stay overbought a little bit longer than one might uh, like to. So, uh, you know, let's go take a look at, uh, let's go take a look at, let's go take a look at, so let me go back to this other tab here, right? So we've got the transports. Let's go take and see what the let's go look and see what the transports are doing. Let's go see what the SOX index is uh, doing as well. Here's the transports. Now transports uh, not giving us any kind of pause button out here. 
uh, super strong. Completing uh, now today the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD price projection. The exact number needed to hit was 70.60, It got up to 70.64.67 out here. No bear, you know, now this is, this is actually incredibly impressive. That doesn't get too much more impressive than this. You want to take a look at uh, coming off of a bottom. I, I forgot to look at this, quite frankly, until we just came out here. Uh, you know, I take a look at the S&P 500, the number of up sessions that we've had over the last uh, nine trading sessions, the last 12 trading sessions out here. It's been pretty amazing. But the Dow Transport's actually been more amazing. And you haven't seen a, a single bearish uh, reversal candle inside of the uh, transports. Just look how strong uh, this is pretty amazing out here. So we have the Dow transports. Let's try to let's put this on a, a longer term chart. Let's try to figure this one out. See where this uh, looks like it's headed to. So if we come and take a look at really the large A to B equals CD on the uh, transports, you'd come off of the 2009 lows. You'd come all the way up. I would at least the July 8th, 2011 high out here, and I would make the uh, pullback down to that October 7th uh, week. So one to one A to B equals CD. On the Dow Transports on the uh, weekly, the the large A to B equals CD says 74.48. And this is a weekly chart that we're taking a look at out here on the uh, Transports. Uh, let's uh, a moment here to uh, da, 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 da. let me do one other thing out here, a couple other things. Let's just take a look at uh, expansions from 2000. Let's see, was it? Uh, it looks like it was a little bit higher in 2008. So the high, May 23rd, 2008, in the trainings was uh, 53. 5536. Let's go from that high down to the uh, low in March of 2009. You can see it's already above the 1.272 uh, level out here. So with that being the case, that says the 1.618 would be its uh, target or ex its expansion. So 7639. So you got 7639, 7158. Uh, oh no, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. This A to B equals C D got a little off kilter. Stevie Sun must have done something wrong there. Let's redraw that because I know that wasn't correct. See if we've got some convergence here of the A to B equals C D. Yeah, so it looks like the transports actually want to head to about the seventy four fifty to seventy six thirty nine level out here. And you know, if we take a look back at the last time on a weekly chart that this thing broke over a, a resistance uh, area, you know, you'd come right back here to the trading session of August second. So August second, you had a, a, a dark cloud cover uh, candle. Uh, out here on a, a weekly uh, chart, you had some additional follow through, and that was you could also had a dark cloud cover right back uh, here as well. This is on the trading session of May twenty fourth, but uh, resistance. This is over resistance, lock, stock, and barrel. That is on the uh, transports out there. So there's an indication of uh, the uh, Dow wanting to go ahead and uh, break to the upside with that thousand point consolidation. Um, pretty cool. We're actually long the uh, Dow at the stage. We just keep moving our stop out. We'll let the market do what the market is going to uh, do out there. So that's on the trannies. Let's go take a look at the SOX index again. We saw Intel. I think that might have been during the last hour. Intel, it's got the confirmed A to B equals CD up, and it's got some conviction behind its move. Uh, uh, you had Texas Instruments also confirmed yesterday. An a to, another reconfirmation of an A to B equals CD up as well. Looks like I'll have to do that when I get back to the break because where is the socks? There it is. It's in the upper. It's right dead smack in front of me. Oh, my goodness. That's gapping up here this morning. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. That Dow's up uh, 55 points right now. Uh, S&P is up 5, uh, Composite up uh, 3. Uh, just before we went to break, we were taking a look at the uh, SOX index that had gapped up, so... You know, just looking for what the signals, what the message of the uh, markets uh, is at the uh, moment. Uh, let's go uh, check out some of the uh, ETF structures out here uh, inside the S&P 500. So, yeah, because what we're seeing here is a lot of bullish uh, momentum and moves out here. So let's go see what's going on underneath the uh, covers somewhere in here. There's the uh, spiders. There we go. So let's go take a look and start off by looking at the, uh, let's look at the technology sector. That's number one waiting inside of the S&P 500. And obviously, you've got Apple as a large waiting inside that. Let me just make sure I got all the active data. We're looking at a gap up here this morning, right? Yeah. So we're looking at a, a gap up. Yesterday's high was uh, 3364. Low so far today, 3367. So a little bit of a, a gap in there. Now that's important. We had a <coughs> boy. This thing here is uh, is bullish. Now it's completed in the one to one A to B equals CD. The price projection 3383 intraday. It's been up at 3385. You're trading at 33.76 uh, so far, but you know, so it gaps up, small little gap, nonetheless. So as you gap up into a D point, that's always bullish uh, on a A to B equals C D up. That says uh, 34.51 uh, could easily be its uh, next target out here. Uh, there is no resistance inside of uh, inside of the X L K. If I were going to find any resistance, it would have been right back here. That was on the uh, trading session of October the 23rd. The high out there was 30, 
Well, that's the prior candle. The resistance would have been 3357 October 22nd out there, and you can see you're up above that. So the XLK, the number one weighting sector inside of the S&P 500, even Apple's trading down a buck sixty right now. Not a, a big deal out here. This is actually up and over resistance. It wants higher price. So that is pretty positive for the S&P 500. Uh, let's go take a look here at the, uh, let's go look at the XLF. Yeah, now the XLF I think might be the third, so we'll go to the XLV after that one. I think that's the second waiting inside here. We know that this is really, for the most part, doesn't get too much more bullish than this, in my opinion. You know, this is the weak sector. This is a, you know, the weak, well, I think it's, yeah, I'd say it's pretty safe to say the weakest sector with inside the S&P 500, but the weakest sector gave us the largest bullish signal that you could ever want which was taking out the island reversal, not just an island reversal, an abandoned top, an abandoned doji, uh, you know, on the weekly chart out there. Man, you know, to, that, that should have been the signal that this market was ready to crater. And when signals that suggest a market is going to crater and it doesn't, and the fact that area gets taken out, that's exactly what took place here, and it was taken out with some nice wide-ranging bars and accelerating volume on October the 16th, on October the uh, 17th out there. Um, pretty pretty darn impressive. Now, that's not to say it doesn't have some resistance because there's certainly non-believers out here, and one of those is the gap down that it had on October 23rd. So right now, it's uh, tested today, the low of the October 22nd candle, 20.88. Uh, a close above 20.88, that'll go ahead and repair that window, and prices inside of the XL at the financial sector should, in fact, continue to also move higher. Very, very impressive when you uh, see price take out a reversal uh, configuration uh, such as that. If you want to see what the weekly looks like, I'll just switch over here to the weekly. And here's where you take a look. Look at this. This, I mean, it is so hard to find these patterns out here. And uh, here's your here's your doji. Here's your abandoned baby uh, top out here. And uh, you know, it uh, doesn't get much more impressive than that. That says uh, that says the XLF, and you can see it's up above the top of that, which is 2083 or 2084 right now. It says the XLF wants higher price out there. Uh, let's go take a look at the other sectors. Let's look at them all if I can. The easiest way to do that, I'll just start down here. I know how my system works. So let's take a look at the industrial sector, the XLI. That, uh, let me just make sure i got all the active uh, data here. So many things going on. There we go on my uh, screen here. So uh, this thing has a, a little bit of a open window right here. This looks like a little bit of a gap up between the session of October 23rd's high and the low on October 24th. Nothing uh, bullish yet inside this. It's got its 1 to 1A to B equals CD. That was 48.58. It's up above that level. That says the next stop for the uh, XLI is the uh, 49.85. We can see all each of these are certainly in a uh, overbought uh, condition, so they are extended out here. Uh, but, uh, you know, intermediate term, these things are looking uh, very bullish. That was the industrials. XLI, that was the daily chart that we were looking at. Let's go take a look at the XLY. That is uh, consumer discretionary, I believe. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I've got to update the uh, data here so we can get some current uh, information. So this thing here gapped up a couple of days ago. That was on uh, today's, what, Tuesday? So Friday. Friday we had a gap up inside of the XLY. The uh, top of, uh, looks like Thursday, was 62.89. The low on uh, Friday, 62.97. So no bullish uh, configurations here. Uh, here's a, uh, I covered this a uh, th less sometime last week. I do see a, a hanging man candle out here. And uh, I can tell you, my opinion is disregard a hanging man candle. Uh, it is listed, technically speaking, it is a, a bearish candle. But it is not a bearish reversal candle. There's no way you can tell me that the bears have control of the uh, market here when you see it close at its session highs here. So... Not a hammer candle. You certainly don't want to use that as support or anything. In my opinion, it's just one of those candles that it's just really agnostic. Just kind of ignore it out there. Here we can see that the XLY, it's already above the one-to-one -one of the shorter term A to B equals CD. Let's see if we have a longer term that is confirmed. You had 6.3 million shares on September 19th, up and over with 5 million shares. So on light volume, nonetheless, uh, looks like 6411-ish is the uh, target for the XLY at this stage. And all we're doing, folks, we're just taking a look at the charts. We're using the information that the market is giving to us now. We're just really looking for reversal signals. My approach to the market is really simple. Use the information that we have now. 
take a look at uh, patterns and price projections of where things are likely to trade to. And when the market gives you new information, then react then and only then. In this case here, we take a look at the XLU. Let me just make sure that I update uh, this stock chart as uh, well. Uh, this has got a, a little shooting star candle out here, so there is some resistance inside of the utility sector. That's going to be the high from October 23rd, 39.29. If you see it closed above 39.29, it's got uh, uh, authorization to move higher. The problem is where is it going to move higher to? Well, or you're always looking the left-hand side of the chart, and you're always looking for swing points. In this case here, the swing point will take you back to July 3rd, 30th. So not that much higher. That's at the 39.81 level. If it can clear that, that sets up a move to this swing point, this reversal signal. Uh, that is on the trading session of May 22nd. That's that key reversal day that's out there. But not a, a ton of resistance here inside of the uh, utilities uh, sector uh, out here. Uh, again, it's just got to get above and close above October 23rd's high, 39.29. Let's go take a look at the uh, next sec, the XLV. So I believe this is the second weighting inside the S&P 500. It's the second or third. That is the healthcare sector. Looks like there was something out here. Let me update uh, this uh, for uh, data. Uh, this here today, that would be considered a hanging man candle if price were to stop in there, here as we speak at 53.03. It's, again, like I said earlier, uh, not bearish. We did have a, a doji candle out here. That was on October 25th. That said uh, resistance is going to be the high of October 24th, 52.97. You're at 53.03. So the health sector here, if it can close above 52.97, then it's going to move higher. Let's take a look at A to B equals CD patterns inside here. Let's come off of the lows here from June 24th. That's our A point we'll use as our B point. Yeah, we need to use as our B point. The August 1st high, your C point of 1A to B equals CD, August 28th. Don't know if we got over, let's see, you got uh, 8.7 million shares up and over it with 6, 3, 5, 6, how about here, 7 million shares. So you're up and over it with lighter volume. Nonetheless, 53.85 is its next stop. It's trading out at 53.01 as we speak. And again, it closed today above 52.97. That would be a breakout above resistance. That is in the healthcare sector. The XLP. That has, well, oh, how about this? This is now broken out of a three-point consolidation zone out here. Uh, that consolidation really being set up with the high right around the 42.19 level, the low of which is 39.05. Three-point consolidation, add that to the uh, 42. That says 45 bucks is its next move out here. And the XLP, uh, let's see, is there any other, anything else that might be bearish out here on the XL, XLP? Nothing that I really see. So you've got uh, full steam ahead inside of uh, of the consumer staples uh, area, and that price target here again, uh, fifty four forty two uh, three points. So forty five bucks. You're at forty two eighty three right now. Let's see if I have left out any of the sectors. Uh, energy sector, of course, I left out a sector. I believe uh, maybe I also left out the building materials. So we'll take a look at that also. The energy sector here looks like well. I don't know if that gapped up or I haven't updated the charts here. Okay, there we go. Uh, no gap here. Yesterday was a area of uh, resistance. That was uh, yesterday's candle was the resistance point here, the high of which is uh, 8686. So you trade at 8701. If it closes above 8686, the energy sector uh, will continue to move higher. You can see it completed a one to one A to B equals CD. Uh, the price projection was 8769. It got up to a high of 87. 59. So that works here. Now it's just taking on the resistance of yesterday's little doji out there, close above that, and it will go ahead and move up to about the uh, 8928-ish type range. That will be the uh, next target. And that is inside of the XLE, the energy sector inside the uh, market. I believe uh, the material sector, the XLB, that might be one that we left out. That should then cover it. Yeah, that will cover it all, I believe. And so let's go take a look at this, see where this is uh, trading at, see what kind of resistance this has. So if you've been taking notes, I don't think I've found much in the way of resistance here with inside the uh, sectors of the S&P 500, so that's helpful for us to take a look at. We're not going to find it here either. Um, so we don't, we don't see, you know, it's, yeah, it's done the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, but let's see, is this a conf confirmation here? Uh, August 14th high, 3.9 million shares. Yeah, you're above it on 7.2 million shares on September the 10th. 
And this says that it absolutely wants to get to 4517 out here. That's your 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD. You can see this completed the the 1 to 1, but it did it with a gap up and uh, not too bad of a wide ranging bar that was on the trading session here on October 22nd. Yeah, uh, that's not how you that's not how you finish a D point of an A to B equals CD pattern. When you do that, that's a signal that it wants higher price out there, and that's what the uh, uh, the building sector is going to actually do out there. So pretty bullish when we look underneath the covers of the S&P 500. Let's go look at the uh, currency uh, market here. We didn't take a look at the euro in that last hour, so let's go take a look at the uh, Queen B, see what the uh, Queen is doing out here. Uh, the Queen here, this is the uh, daily chart. And uh, this is something we're really going to be keeping our eye on. Now, I'm going to switch over to the weekly chart. That'll show you why. So on the weekly chart out here, I'm going to try to blow this up on the uh, screens. Can you can you see? Yeah, I can blow it up and then pull it back a bit. So let me do this. We'll scrunch it. i got to use that old technical scrunch term. So this is a weekly chart. Now, the blue line that I'm pointing to on my screen, this blue diagonal line that's coming down here, uh, let's change that. That's not even fair. Let's Let's change that from blue to some other color. Let's change that to to black, right? Yeah, let's do that. And try to try to not confuse everybody out here. So we're just going to change the colors of my lines out here. And when I blow it up, it makes it a little bit easier because somebody could be watching us on Tiger TV and say, which blue line? you got blue lines going in every which direction out here. So we are just change that out there. All right, so here's a weekly chart for the uh, queen. And we can see the black diagonal line that you can see now coming down through the top of my screen. That is long-term resistance. That goes back to 2008, and that is the descending price channel. Now, what we can see here is last week that level was attacked with a wide-ranging bar. When you attack an area with a wide-ranging bar, number one, markets don't end on wide-ranging bars like that. says you're going to be back up there, and it's going to try to take that level out. Now, I suspect what we're actually going to see here with the euro is it's going to successfully take that level out. And what it will do, it will complete this 1.272 butterfly pattern that we are looking at. Again, this is a weekly chart out here. And what the weekly chart pattern is telling me is it wants to actually trade the euro, wants to trade up into the 139.45-ish type of level, where it will run into the trend line. That's that red diagonal line that you're looking at on my screen out here. And we'll know if that's going to be the case if we see a close above the uh, black, uh, the black descending line that is on my uh, screen now it's a weekly chart that means you have to see it close not today not tomorrow not thursday but on friday to confirm that that's what the move would be uh now to see it hit that area which we have and see it act as resistance that's normal i mean that's resistance you know realize and recognize that that is a descending price channel that takes you back to 2008 so that should be resistance out here now that's the weekly chart if we go take a look at the, and by the way, the euro, you know, I mentioned that the uh, S&P is, uh, or the markets, uh, the, the only one that's really been consolidating has been the Dow. We're, we're pretty clear on that. But the rest of the markets are in the strongest bullish run, even actually the Dow on the uh, weekly chart. As you take a look at a weekly chart, that's really what I'm using to make the determination of how strong these markets are. Strongest bullish leg since the March of 2009 time frame, folks. Pretty amazing when you actually go take a look at it. We do take a look at the uh, daily chart here for the euro. It's just been moving sideways ever since it really ran into that resistance last week on uh, Friday. And these are not reversal candles. Just working off an overbought condition. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. 
You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 43 points right now. S&P is up about uh, three. Uh, peak back in on the Euro-Japanese yen. Yeah, it's making that A to B equals CD pattern that we uh, took a uh, look at uh, earlier. Uh, it's going to head up to the 135, 32-ish uh, range. That'll be the first stop. That's your one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. That is the energy fuel that the uh, markets need, the directional indicator, the directional indicator for the uh, markets out there. Uh, that is on the Euro Japanese yen. So the question uh, uh, is: uh, Somebody uh, has to be saying, "Hey, Steve, what uh, would it take for you to uh, get short? What would it take for this market to reverse?" Well, the first place that we'd have to start with, you know, the broad market, the New York Stock Exchange. I need to see the bears take control of the uh, marketplace, and that would require. Let me move back here. That would require, in fact, today what it would require specifically and exactly, and I know what that is. And uh, you should want to know that, too. That would be net declining issues of 1,545 or more. That will take the price oscillators down below the uh, zero line. And that would say, hey, guess what? On a daily basis, on the daily chart, 
the uh, Bulls will have fumbled the uh, ball out there. That'll be the first element. I'd also want to uh, see... I'd also want to see the VIX index get above the 50-day exponential moving average. If we go take a look at that, see where that is trading here right now and what that would take and what that number is. Uh, and in, in, this is not bearish. This would just simply be, hey, the market's going to go ahead and pull back here. And that would be getting above the uh, 1491 level. You're at 1338 out there. So those are two things that I would need to see in order to say, Hey, there's something here you got to be paying attention to, and maybe a tradable direction. I've been trading to the long side in the ES Mini, and those are the only trades that I am uh, looking for. I am not looking for short trades, not until we get a signal that the uh, trend has changed out there. No reason to trade against the uh, trend, and right now the trend is to the upside. And uh, I just simply take the uh, information that the market gives to me, and then from there, then just point the uh, direction. So those are two things that we would need to see inside of the uh, marketplace. Then we other candle signals, yesterday's candle signals, uh, the uh, number of dojis that were out there, they're important to pay attention to, and until today closes, we won't really know what the uh, meaning is on those. But we took a look at the, all of the uh, sectors with inside the S&P 500. That looks pretty good. We know we're up against resistance, so we know there's headwinds out here. We know the market has moved into a overbought condition and that says, and an overbought condition, at some point in time, the market needs to move sideways to pull back to work that off. Just like we took a look at the euro, a Japanese yen out there, uh, the ex expectation was as we began, I can't remember which show, well, it was the 9 o'clock show. There, it was very easy to see that that was going to go ahead and pull back, and then it's always a matter of measuring what that retracement is that's going to help you to understand just what the meaning of of that natural need for the market to unstretch that rubber band. That's all that this market is doing. It's a rubber band that is stretching in directions on uh, an intraday chart. That's what we pay attention to here. It just makes it easier so you can apply that same set of tools to your daily and to your weekly charts out there. Folks, you know, I don't talk about it too much out here, but I am the author of Mastering Probability. And if you're looking for a – now, the newsletter, uh, it, it's it's – on a daily basis, it averages about 80 pages. That's the 80 pages. That's the expanded edition. But there's the shortened version, which is really what you need to be paying attention to for the day, and that's use a detailed analysis of the markets, usually about 14, 15 pages out there. But if you're interested, really interested, I'd love to be able to educate you. I want to be able to unleash your power and teach you these patterns. Send me an email, steve at tfn.com. You know, all kinds of education that I've got out there that you can take advantage of. So have a great uh, Tuesday, folks. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman is up next. Then we've got the uh, we've got the options hour. And then Daryl Martin, David White, Andy Heck. we got the whole load out here in the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Have a great Tuesday, folks. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Basil Chapman has just announced that he will be hosting a one-day online master trader class. Friday, November 8th, Basil Chapman will teach you the essential fundamentals he uses when trading the market with his Chapman Wave methodology. Included in this full-day online master trader class is one month of Basil's daily newsletter service, The Opening Call, a $128 value, as well as a copy of his CD book, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, which usually sells for $249. Join Basil Chapman for this powerful one-day online master trader class Friday, November 8th, which will be archived if you can't attend live, where he'll give you a complete understanding of the Chapman Wave methodology and how to apply it to profitably trade any market in any time frame. For all the details and to reserve your spot while taking advantage of early bird pricing and saving $200 off the regular price, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.